Okay, so now that we've discussed how to filter and sort, let's talk about how the data on your inventory tab flows over to these yearly sales tabs. Basically what these yearly sales tabs are going to sum up for you are your sales each month based on the sold price on the inventory tab, your cost of goods each month based on your purchase price from the inventory tab, and then at year end you're going to generate some useful info here for the inventory section of your tax return. Um, like I mentioned before, your purchases for the year is going to simply be a sum of the purchase price of anything that has a purchase date of this year. So these two items that I have listed as in 2015 are not going to be included in this, this 2016 inventory purchases here, but everything purchased with a purchase date of 2016, the spreadsheet summing up that entire amount, which is $172, and dumping it right here. So this, you need to know how much you spent on inventory for your tax return, so the spreadsheet's telling you that amount right here. Um, these amounts here, your sales and cost of goods sold, they're not really what you need for tax purposes, but it's helpful just for you to keep a running tab on this throughout the year. If you want to keep track of an accurate sales total for your tax return, I suggest you use the Etsy seller spreadsheet or one of my other bookkeeping spreadsheets, mostly because this sales amount pulling from your sold price, it doesn't always include some important numbers that you would need for tax purposes, like it doesn't necessarily include sales tax you collected or shipping that you may have received. Um, it doesn't take refunds into account. So just remember that this is not necessarily uh, the same as the sales total that will go on your tax return. You'll want to use a seller spreadsheet from Paper and Spark to calculate that number. Your cost of goods sold, it is a number that's on your tax return usually, but you will calculate this number on your tax return directly. It's a plug number for tax purposes. And if you have more questions about that, I've got tons of resources about cost of goods sold and what it means on uh, in my resource library at paperandspark.com. However, the spreadsheet will keep a running tally of the number for you based on the um, purchase price of anything marked with a sold date. So the spreadsheet is looking at your at the date something sold and if it says it's sold, then it's going to say, okay, I'm going to take that purchase price, that cost of the good, and dump it into this cost of goods sold bucket. What you will need for your tax return is your beginning inventory amount, which is going to be zero for your first year of business, or it will roll over from last year's tax return. You need to know how much you spent on purchases that year, which we already discussed, and then you need to know the cost of your ending inventory. So on the last day of the taxable year, which is 1231 for most of us, You'll want to look at what the spreadsheet is saying this number is, and you'll want to verify it with an actual count. And I've got tons of information on that in the spreadsheet instructions, the PDF file that comes with it. But basically, how that number is being calculated, if you have something that is not marked as sold, it is blank in the date sold column, then the spreadsheet is taking its cost and adding that up here. So I've got $36 worth of unsold goods on 1231. And remember that any inventory it's valued at cost, which means it's valued at its purchase price, not the, the price that you list it for online, not its retail price, its cost, its purchase price. So what you'll want to do at year end when I say you need to verify this number is you want to go through, If uh, an easy way to do it is to sort by just the blank stuff, you'll want to go through and make sure that these items are actually still on your shelf. These items are all still here. They are in my ending inventory. It is correct that they are listed here still. Um, that's how you do a verifying count of your year end ending inventory. You might end up with some items on your shelf that are not listed on the spreadsheet at all. And in that case, you'll need to add them in you know, with their purchase price. Maybe you forgot to enter that at some point this year. 
that you want to enter anything that's missing, you want to delete or mark as sold anything that's here that shouldn't be here because you don't see it on your shelf anymore on year, at year end. And then you'll get an accurate ending year inventory cost to go on your tax return. That is basically how you use this spreadsheet, how it can be um, a useful tool for you at tax time. You'll want to remember going into the next year that uh, one ending year's inventory becomes next year's beginning inventory. So you would enter that amount here and then start using it for the next year and you're good to go. And right now the spreadsheet has got tabs for 2016 through 2019. I'm happy to add future years for you. Just send me an email. Um, and just, you know, in general, to leave you with, you want to keep this updated on a consistent basis. You want to enter those purchases as you go. Uh, you want to keep it consistently up to date. Purchase price is important. Purchase date is important. The sold price and the date sold. Those are the most important things that you can be entering here if you want to be able to rely on this for tax purposes. And I think that sums up how to use this spreadsheet. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at hello at paperandspark.com. Don't forget to check out the FAQ and resource library on my website, paperandspark.com. I hope you find this to be a useful tool and thanks for checking it out.